Libby is going to sing for us. So it's welcome to St. Leonard's this morning. It is lovely to see everybody here. And let us now hear our invocation. Libby, thank you. Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, King of my heart. Christ be within me, Christ be below me, Christ be above me, never to part. Christ on our right hand, Christ on our left hand, Christ all around us, shield in her stride. Christ when we're sleeping, Christ when we're sitting, Christ when we're rising, light of all light. Christ be in all hearts, thinking about life. Christ be in all tongues, telling of God. Christ be the vision, in eyes that see life, in ears that hear him, Christ ever be. Thank you, Libby and Esther. That was lovely. And it's, it's so nice to be back here um, worshipping with you again. And it will be like this for the, certainly the next while. Um, but it's lovely to be here and, and on Zoom. And um, we are just working with the technology. I'm trying to get used to it. And I think Monica just has it off to a T. So it's a learning curve for some of us. We'll need to have some tuition from Grant and Ewan at the back as to how we get things to continue to flow as seamlessly as they did when Monica was here. And hopefully she is enjoying her, her holiday, her well-earned rest. Well, let's come together, still ourselves before God. Jesus said to his disciples, come away and rest a while. Come into the Lord's presence now, away from the burdens and stresses of life. Come with open arms and receive the rest that Jesus offers to restore our souls and equip us for whatever comes next. Very apt in our time at the moment, because sometimes both in home life, work life, we're living day to day, not quite sure what will happen next or what we'll find when we turn on the news. So let us come together and sing, it's on a video clip, come and find the quiet center.
quiet, restful tune um, for us to begin with, because our theme this morning is rushing and resting and how we prioritise our time. I don't know if that's familiar to anybody, but what keeps us busy? Is it work? So we have a few funny slides just to say, is that what your day is like? You, the minute your eyes ping open in the morning, you're rushing from here to there and all over the place. So next slide, please. You know, you've got a drink in one hand, your lunch in the other, and then you wonder why you've got indigestion because your brain is in overdrive thinking on the next thing. And I think sometimes this is how our lives have become. Next slide, please. Or, much as you love your grandchildren, are they the ones that are keeping you really busy? And it is great to have them, but it does take a lot of time. And when we have our grandchildren, we're not as young as we were with our own, so it takes a bit more effort. And it is lovely to see them go, and they do teach us so much, but I'm quite sure we're tired when they go home at the end of the day. So, or is it sometimes just church activities and things that we're really busy with? And do you ever think, if only I had the time, I would do, would you do a bit of gardening? Be green fingered and see what you could do. How do you like to relax? Next slide, please. Is it with a good book and a cup of tea? And you sit there and if it's nice and sunny and you've got a bit of shade in the sunshine to just sit outside, listen to the birds or the, the bees, the Sunday school, we're looking at bees this morning, uh, buzzing around in the garden. Um, or, next slide, is it doing a bit of baking, getting your hands stuck into kneading the dough and relaxation there. You get rid of all your frustrations if you're making bread, but making something nice, and you might be doing that with the grandchildren as well. Or, next slide, do you have a favourite spot to just sit, relax, and spend time in peace and quiet? And the last slide, it's a familiar slide as you're all sitting there today. Uh, we've got our masks on and we have got time to just come into God's presence, be still, forget all that's gone on before, and just be at peace. So that's how we're going to hopefully flow things through today, that we'll just have a bit of time of quiet contemplation. So let us draw near to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, you always make time for us. We're sorry that we don't always make time for you. When we're rushing around being busy, sometimes even when we're doing your work, we forget about you. We are sorry when we make our lives so full that there is no room left for you, no room to get away, to be in a quiet place with you. 
Forgive us, Lord, and help us not to hurry, but to slow down, to make space for you to dwell within us. And in that dwelling place, may we seek what you want us to do and who you want us to spend time with. Help us to get the balance right, a right rhythm that is in tune with you. Thank you, Lord, that you always had time for people, even when you were tired and needed a rest. When the crowds gathered, your compassionate heart healed and restored all those who came to you. Thank you that you are kind and caring and lavish your love upon us. Your self-giving love has set us free to be the people you have called us to be. Thank you that you are present in the big and small things of our lives, in the ordinary and everyday times, and in the extraordinary and special times. You never leave us or forsake us. Thank you, Lord, our shepherd and king. And now let us say the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Bible reading today is from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 34 and 53 to 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. And then because so many people were coming and going, they did not even have a chance to eat. And he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gesenerat and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched were healed. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Amen. So, peace and quiet. How many times have you wished for that? How many times have you tried to get it, but were unsuccessful? Maybe we can share the disciples' frustration that they had been so busy, they hadn't even had time to eat because they had been sent out by Jesus and they were desperate to tell all their stories of all the things they had done. Jesus knew that they needed and sought out some solitude. The crowds had other ideas. To say this past year has been stressful is an understatement. So maybe it is time to take stock and seek some peace and tranquility, some quiet time. It might seem strange, but I often find it hard to get quiet time. My mind goes into overdrive. So why is this? Do I find silence uncomfortable? 
do I feel I need to fill the silence with something? Have I become so accustomed to noise that quiet surroundings don't feel right? Is your house normally full of people and pets, so you rarely know quiet? And when it is, it's so foreign, you think this is really uncomfortable. We might not like all the noise we hear, but we have to admit for many of us, it's just weird to have complete silence. Are we too busy? We've got so much going on, just to take time out to be still can be difficult. Our minds are too busy. We're fo we can't focus on being still. Our minds are so easily distracted by all the things we've got going on. We can't get into quiet mode. Is this because we're avoiding thinking about the things we should be thinking about, but we don't want to? It might be too difficult or emotional. So we avoid going there. We drown out our thoughts through things like the TV, the radio, or something else. Have you ever been watching TV at night and you start dozing off? I can doze off through the day, I hate to tell you when I'm watching the TV. But if it's at night and you think, right, I'll just go to bed. So you turn off the TV, you yawn your way up the stairs, and your head hits the pillow, and your mind goes into overdrive. And you think, where is all of this coming from? A few minutes ago, I couldn't keep my eyes open. I've missed half the programme. Now I can't shut my brain down. We sort of turn off our brain when we're watching the TV. But now that the preoccupation of the noise has disappeared, all we have now are our thoughts. And we don't want that because we're trying to go to sleep. But that's what can happen with the silence. Our brain kicks into a higher gear. And sometimes the thoughts that pop into our minds are the things we don't want to think about. It's, I didn't do that at work today. I need to do it tomorrow. And what about this? And I forgot about that. And so it goes on. Or it could be that we actually have too much solitude already. And some people would want to have less quietness in their lives. Solitude is not something they look for. It's something they hide from. And maybe as a child, you remember if you've been naughty or you've done something that your mum and dad don't like, you're sent to your room to think about it. And you've nothing but silence to keep you company. Not like children's rooms today. I think I would quite like to get sent to a children's room today. But when I was sent to my room as a child, it had very little in it. I wasn't deprived, but it certainly didn't have things um, that would keep me amused until I had thought about why I was there. But with COVID, we've all had to be inside more. We haven't been able to go to all the places we normally would be spending time. We've spent more time at home. And there are some reasons why we might be saying no thanks to some silent solitude. Jesus needs time of solitude where he could pray. He just couldn't be busy all the time. And if we had read Mark 1, in verse 35 to 39, it says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This incident takes place early in Jesus's ministry. He would spent the day teaching and driving out evil spirits and healing people. And so he gets up early to go out and be by himself. And it's understandable why Jesus would need to do this. During his ministry, he would undoubtedly be busy from sunrise to sunset whether he was traveling or teaching or healing, he would not have the opportunity to get away by himself and relax. And I'm sure we can all relate to this. From the time we get up 
you're sometimes on the go all day. You've work to do, family to take care of. Perhaps there isn't even enough hours in the day for you to do all that you need to get done. So you would say, quiet time, get away by myself. How do you expect me to fit that in? But maybe we need to heed Jesus and make time. If Jesus can fit it in, then we can too. Jesus got up early, but I wonder, was he tempted to stay in bed? Or was it a lovely sunny morning when you feel like getting up and not staying in bed? It's different when it's a howling gale and the rain's battered and it's dark, then you definitely don't want to get up early. I know how I get, if I don't get the opportunity to unwind, I get irritable, tensed and stressed. And I hate to admit it, but it's the family that usually get her on the receiving end. Uh, if it's not hubby, it is my sister. And my sister will go, are you crab it today? And I'll go, no, she says, yes, you are. And I have to admit, yes, I am probably being a bit crab it. But notice what happens when Jesus does get away. And he cannot get any peace. There's always someone looking for him. Have you ever felt like that in order to get a little bit of peace, you have to find the perfect hiding place? And you think you've got it only to hear within a few minutes, Mom, where are you? Or could be your husband or somebody else saying, where's my golf socks? Have you found this? I put that shirt in the wash and is it, is it clean? It's like the family can't survive without you for five minutes. Jesus knows that feeling. Everyone's looking for him. And notice, we don't see Jesus sounding off. He doesn't respond with, can't I have any time to myself? Is that too much to ask? He must have been tempted, but he didn't. We didn't see him crab it. But going back to our reading in Mark 6, verses 30 to 34, and we see the apostles excited to report back to Jesus all they had achieved. And then seeing all these people coming. And he says, but we haven't even had a chance to eat. Can we get a quiet place? And these, these two, the reading today is sandwiched in between the feeding of the 5,000. But Jesus knows that the disciples are exhausted and hungry. And so that's why he says, let's go off and be by ourselves and get some rest. And that was music to their ears. And then the boat reaches the shore and they see the crowd anxiously waiting for Jesus. Can you picture the irritation of the apostles? If it were me, I'm sure I certainly would have been irritated. And I think I can picture Peter going to Jesus and whispering, saying, Go and tell them to go away. Tell them we'll have to get some rest. Come on, they'll understand. You can see them afterwards. But Jesus ministers to them. He saw how desperate they were to be taught. His compassion towards them overrode his desire to be alone with his disciples. Sometimes we won't be able to reject the interruption. We need to be a little flexible and have the compassion of Jesus. Sometimes the interruption will be about something that can wait, but sometimes it won't be. We may still be irritated, but hopefully we'll be understanding and realise as much as we try to have a set time for quiet, life happens and we have to deal with the need and then try again for the quiet time. And for Jesus, it wasn't long after before he was able to have the quiet time. When the boat landed, he ministered to the people and then it was getting late and they needed to get dinner. And this is when the 5,000 were fed. And so when the disciples hadn't had a chance to eat, but they would get that chance because as you know, there were plenty leftovers from the feeding of the 5,000. So they would get the leftovers from the 12 baskets. Then right after this, Jesus sent his disciples ahead of them while well, he gets some rest and relaxation and prayer time. Immediately, 
in verse 45 to 46, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat, go ahead of him to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. Jesus did make the time to get away. He needed to pray. Silence and solitude are needed to rejuvenate. But Jesus' main purpose was he needed to be in touch with his father. How difficult is solitude when we're not used to it? We can't expect to be able to sit in silent contemplation for 30 minutes without feeling it uncomfortable. It isn't something that is natural in our culture. It takes practice and perseverance. Some people are really good with it, but I have to say I'm not one of those. But time spent alone with God is what will refresh us and replenish us. So what's going to help us get into the rhythm so we can benefit from silent contemplation with God? First, we can set a regular time that will work best for us. In our quiet time, we let God speak through his spirit or his word. How does silence and contemplation benefit us? We need to place that higher on our list of values, that we need to value the peace and the quiet. Another benefit is that it allows us time to think. Whenever things are chaotic, what do we often say? I can't even hear myself think. And it's a funny thing to say, but we understand it. And it means that there's too much noise to think clearly. We need silent contemplation so we can concentrate, focus and think clearly. And it works for our ears too. Silent contemplation will help us to hear the voice of God more clearly. Our time with God isn't just about reading his word and praying. It's about listening. What is he saying to us as we study his word? How is he responding to our prayers? If we're able to listen, we can hear him give insight and direction. We'll hear his knowledge and his wisdom. We'll get answers or confirmation and perhaps even a revelation. When we think we hear an obscure noise, what do we say? Stop, listen, did you hear that? Or turn that down, I think there was something I heard there. We need the distractions cleared away before we can hear what we need to. Before refrigerators, people used ice houses to preserve their food. And ice houses had thick walls, no windows, and a tightly fitted door. Often the ice would last well into the year. And one time a man lost a valuable watch while working in an ice house. He searched diligently for it, carefully raked through the sawdust, but didn't find it. His fellow workers also looked, but their efforts proved futile. A small boy heard about the fruitless search slipped into the ice house during the noon hour and emerged with the watch. Amazed, the men asked him, how did you find it? I closed the door, the boy replied, and then I lay down in the sawdust and kept very still. Soon I heard the watch ticking. When we are silent before God, we will hear his voice. So let's make sure we're making the sacrifice of setting aside the time to get alone with God in silent contemplation and improve our quality of life. And as we enjoy this nice sunny weather, let's make time to enjoy that by being still in a nice relaxing spot and think on God and our life and what he's saying to us. Amen. And now let us draw close to God with our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Lord, your compassion for the crowds that swamped you were ever present. Compassion, Lord, we bring before you now our brothers, 
are in sisters around the world. In China, where churches are being destroyed, in South Africa, where many are being threatened with guns if they set foot out of their homes. We pray for all Christians, for all victims of prejudice here and worldwide. Lord, you took your disciples away from the crowds to rest and refresh, but it was not always easy because the crowds followed and made demands on your time. We pray for your church today, for all ministers, worship leaders, youth workers, all those you have given the responsibility of leadership to. We ask that you enable them to find and regain a healthy balance amid the rhythm of life's rushing and resting. We pray for the bereaved and all those who are sick in mind, body or soul, for all those burnt out by rushing here and there caring for others without giving thought for their own self-care. We pray for all those anxiously awaiting long overdue operations and all those who are having to find new rhythms of life as this time due to suffering long COVID. We lift before you all those in our communities who are finding life transitions difficult and daunting, refugees settling in new places, young adults leaving care and forging their own life, children leaving the familiar surroundings of junior school to head to bigger school after the holidays, those leaving and looking forward to college or venture into the rhythm and challenges of the workplace. As restrictions lift, we pray for those preparing to go back to the workplace rather than working from home. Many have been stressed trying to balance work amid family life in lockdown. Others have found working from home beneficial and are anxious about returning to the office. We lift all to you as they attempt to restore and find new balance. And we bring before you Germany and the flooding that has happened there. And we pray for the people who have lost loved ones. We pray for the emergency services as they continue to search for those in all those flooded buildings. Lord, we just ask that you be with them and that your love will enfold them at this tragic and difficult time as Europe comes to term with the flooding. And now in a time of silent prayer, we bring before you those that we know in our own communities that are in need of prayer this morning. Lord of all righteousness and peace, we bring, we pray for a dissolving, we pray for a dissolving of hatred and a renewal of compassion and unity. These prayers we bring before you. Amen. And now we come to our intimations, and I am not aware of into any intimations other than we have some lovely pictures. So we've got pictures following last week's service and at the end we have the scouts presented Monica with a quake on Thursday. So there are some pictures from last week of, I'm really sorry that I missed the, the event last week um, to say farewell for Monica's last service, although she is still around with us I think until the end of the month, but she will be sadly missed and so we can enjoy these memories of last week. All that she has committed to the, her, the ministry here at St. Leonard's over those seven years, which as we heard last week has been tremendous. These photos will be at the end of the service then um, 
they will just run as people leave if you want to see them again. I think there will be more added as well. So do sit and, 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 and look at them again. But we're going to close our worship this morning with the Makaton blessing so we can sing and sign the Makaton blessing.